In this video, we're going to make some tit house in a style of dirty bird like this. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. If you're interested in music coaching and you want to work on your mixing, production, sound design skills, all the links are down below. Feel free to book a call with me or send me a message on Instagram. And without further talking, let's get straight into the video. So we're going to start with my <laughs> favorite part. As always, that's going to be the kick and the bass. I'm going to show you uh, the sound design here. Uh, it's pretty interesting, though pretty simple, as I often notice in... Uh, a good take house tracks. So uh, let's solo the kick and the bass and take a look at everything. So a uh, pretty interesting groove here. If you listen to the original track, I think we could check somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um. So it's pretty interesting, um, soft bass here. And I was able to get it pretty accurate. Again, as always, like it's hard to do like 100%, but the logic, uh, all of the tools, like techniques I used in sound design, you can replicate the sound for yourself and just tweak it so it sounds good in your track. So once again, pretty, pretty close, like almost 100% identical. So uh, let's take a look at the bass here. Uh, here's how it looks and let's, bypass all of the effects here and start with the oscillators uh what i did to the sound so we are starting with the bsod square which is an analog here uh the envelope one is really really short as you can see 124 milliseconds the release time is also pretty uh pretty short and this is how it sounds without the filter and without uh, this also here uh bypass And if you want to check the notes, here are the notes from the original track. I think it's uh, around the same. Okay, after that, we are applying a triangle. And what it does, it adds a bit of FM synthesis, but it's not playing, so it's quiet. Also, don't forget to set random to zero because we want our bass to start uh, with the same phase all the time. So it sounds like this. If you want, you can add it. Really, it doesn't change that much. So to make the bass fatter, we could do like this. But then again, the most important thing is um, FM modulation. Okay, and uh, envelope one is controlling the amount of FM here, so just a bit, uh, which makes the sound uh, it's a bit more interesting, a bit more dynamic. Uh, then after that, I'm applying uh, attack kicks at 27 and set this mod to one shot. So it's like same all the time. And uh, yeah, so after that, we are using the filter on the A and B oscillator, MG low 18, adds a little bit of drive here and fat. And also envelope one is controlling the cutoff of the filter. So it's giving you that nice attack with the noise oscillator. So you can uh, assign it to the filter if you want, or you can use it without the filter. I think both works well. I like it so far. And important thing here is to add resonance. So it's giving you that nice sound. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the oscillator section. One more thing that I'm doing here, I am using LFO one to modulate the master tuning. So we could do like this. Uh, should be in Uniponel, just one arrow here, and just a little bit, like about 3%. Just adding a bit of that nice, uh, how to call, sort of a knock kind of feeling, I would say. Yeah, so with, with the LFO one, bit of that uh, tuning here, so master tuning. Okay, so that's it for the oscillator section. Then uh, let's talk about the uh, effects. So quite a lot of distortion here. 
pretty aggressive bass. Then after that, I'm using a compressor. Uh, it's not in multiband. So uh, the ratio is, we'll get to like 6 to 1. Uh, attack should be pretty, pretty short. And release time also, we can make like 120, something like this. Again, it's not like super crucial, but just uh, one more step to shape this out. And then the final thing is going to be the filter. To close. Close it and then uh, filter all of the high frequencies here. So it sounds really good. A bit of uh, drive and fat here. And that's pretty much the sound, as you can hear. So pretty cool. I'm, I'm liking the sound here. It sounds pretty nice. Maybe, yeah, shorten the attack and release here. Without the Uh, compressor sounds like this. Okay, so that's it for the bass. And one more important thing is going to be this tom, um, tom part because it's adding a lot of groove here. If you listen together with the kick, it's really important. So it's a basic like 808 kind of tom sound. And uh, yeah, so really, really simple. You just need to find a place where you can put the ton, and that's going to be it. And then, uh, as always, I'm applying a bit of saturation on the group here, just to bring everything like a bit up up front, especially like the bass frequencies. And then for the kick, I try to find something similar as in the original track. Uh, I don't have the exact same kick, but. If you listen, sort of this like thumpy tech house kick, mine is, is similar to it. So again, depending on the vibe of your track, you can pick the kicks that, that you want basically. Okay, so that was it for the kick and the bass. Now we can talk about the synths. So I want to start with this uh, fill sound, as you can hear here. This is uh, what I've got so far. Pretty cool and pretty fat sound, and it's really simple. Let's talk about that. So uh, it's basically the saw and a square, and what I'm doing here, I'm doing plus seven, so this is the perfect fifth. Uh, it's in mono, the envelope looks like this, so it's, it's basic, I didn't change anything. Uh, so yeah, that's the sound itself. In terms of the processing, I have distortion and EQ, so let's check without the effects here. So with the distortion and EQ, it's really becoming much fatter and much more powerful. So one more interesting thing that is happening in the original track is if you listen here closely. So basically they are closing the filter and I try to do the same thing. So we are going from the filter here and I'm closing the filter. Yeah, and then we are increasing the resonance, drive and fat, and it's giving us that uh, powerful sound. But like, as you can see, the sound itself is really simple. Again, the saw, uh, the saw oscillator and the square oscillator, the waveform that we picked for that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So just a bit of like uh, boost here with the EQ and a bit of distortion. So really simple sound. And then in terms of the notes, we are going like this. So like from one octave to minus one okay and again uh, don't forget to modulate the filter excuse me automate the filter if you want to go for the same sound uh, but that's going to be it for this sound uh, the next sound that they have i was able to like replicate it like 100 percent but i'm going to show you the logic and then you can pick the waveform that you like for your own track so i just try to make something cool, something different, but similar at the same time. So this is the sound that I've got so far. Yeah, I think it's not bad. Like it's, it's still pretty, pretty interesting. They just have like a different waveform. Uh, but then again, the sound design is uh, pretty, pretty simple here. So if we uh, look at everything, what we've got, so that's the oscillator B, basic, uh, so, uh, saw waveform, then uh, this is BS, 
BS2 Filthy from uh, Analog here. Sounds like this. And I slightly detuned the oscillators to give it like nice wide feeling, although the original was uh, not like that wide. And I used a bit of a pulse width modulation here, which looks like this. Uh, a filter, so that's MG Low 18 with a lot of resonance. Uh, everything else is pretty basic. Envelope 1 looks like this. So as you can see, it's basic. All I did is I changed the uh, release time, but everything else uh, is the same. Mono. And if you look at the filter here, this is what's happening. So we are opening the filter and then closing again. Uh, and then one more thing is going to be the pitch bend. So if you look at the pitch bend, this is uh, this uh, pitch bend wheel. And um, automating the pitch bend here a bit to give it like nice uh, feeling. So if you listen. And then the filter with the resonance is really doing its thing. So really simple. Again, just uh, automate the cutoff. I increased a bit of uh, drive and fat here. Uh, let's compensate for that. And now let's take a look at the effects section. So really simple, just a bit of distortion to give it like nice crispy feeling. That's without. Because in the original, it was like pretty similar. A uh, bit of reverb, uh, standard preset, just change the mix here. To give it a bit of space because the track is pretty dry. Uh, hyper dimension, I'm not using hyper, just dimension here a bit. Uh, and then chorus. Again, basic settings, just tweak that a bit, you can uh, do the same. But that's pretty much it. So as you can hear, the sound design in this track is pretty simple, uh, but uh, pretty interesting because like with simple sounds, you have to be pretty creative. Okay, so we have uh, just a few sounds left. Uh, let's take a look at this part. <music> Let's start with the um, atmosphere. So I have the transgate effect, which sounds like this. Because without this one, it sounds like this, but with this one, it's almost identical to the original track. So let's take a look at the, at the sound design here. So this is the, this is the sounds. Let's bypass all of the effects and go step by step. So we are starting with um, oscillator A, and this one is uh, pulse with modulation DS. And uh, what is happening here? So I have a unison, uh, FM from B, wavetable position is 55. Okay, so let's take a look. So what is happening here? We are changing the um, wavetable position with LF 403 which is set to four bars. So it's giving us a bit more movement. Then the next thing is going to be LFO1, which is controlling the fine tuning of the oscillator, giving that slightly detuned vibe. That's the one fourth here. And uh, as you can see, it's going in here. Uh, then also unison, pretty important to give it like nice and wide feeling. Uh, so that's it for the uh, oscillator A. Then for the oscillator B, pretty much the same thing. So LFO one is controlling the fine tuning, but just a bit more. Uh, then uh, LFO three is controlling the wavetable position of the both oscillators. And as you can see again, it's set to four bars. And also the FM modulation. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, I think. Yeah, okay, one more thing is, uh, also, uh, excuse me, LFO4 is controlling the level of the oscillator B, so it's not like um, constant all the time, so it just changes. And this is how you create nice and interesting atmospheres, basically. So if we bypass... Yeah, pretty interesting, we can set it here, so it's like subtle, but still. Uh, by the way, the oscillator B is set to like minus one octave. Uh, and then for the effects, really simple, just a bit of distortion here. 
to give it a nice and crispy feeling. Uh, then the chorus, I'm not going to explain the settings because you can play around with it. I think I just use like standard settings, so it's pretty simple. Uh, a bit of flanger again to add nice modulation. Like this. Uh, and then I think a bit of reverb to give it space behind. And then a filter. So with a filter, it's uh, this one is like multi filter BPM. I think that that's like bandpass notch, something like this. So it, it just it just creates nice. It just shapes it a bit more like this with, with the resonance, so you can play with the filter. So that's it uh, for this sound. I think we can set it to mono. And then all you need to do is just find the uh, like trans gate. You can do this manually, like with the LFO. So I really love ways how you can do that. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And as you can hear. Pretty cool sound. Okay, and we have uh, two sounds left basically. So let's talk about this one. This is like a synth fill. This one. This one is like super, super simple. All I did here is uh, again two oscillators. One is uh, minus seven. Actually, we can try. Oh, no, wait. That's fine tuning. So again, this one is a perfect fifth. So plus seven. It's giving us that like nice, a bit of detuned feeling here. So let's uh, check without the filter and the effects here again. Like this. This one is from Analog, DS, Sword Triangle. This one is also from Analog. Um, no unison, so it's pretty like raw, I would say. Just again, like slightly detuned here, fine tuning. Minus 15 and here, uh, plus 12. Then a filter, envelope two is controlling the filter to give it like nice fading effect here. Like this, with a bit of resonance, we can increase a bit like fine and drive, like this. Uh, that's pretty much it, let's set it to mono. And then for the effects here, we have distortion. As you may have noticed, like I use it all the time to give it like a bit more power, maybe sometimes a bit more like crisp peeling. EQ to roll off the high, uh, excuse me, the low frequencies. We don't need too much of that. Uh, reverb. Just a bit. Uh, hyper dimension. Make it a bit wider. Then chorus. And I think that was pretty much it because the rest I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't use. So that's it for this, like, uh, one more synth fill sound. And we have two sounds left. So for this one, I tried to remake it in Serum if you listen like here. So the problem with Serum sometimes because it's like a software synth, it sounds pretty, um, uh, I would say pretty thin. And some synths are just better for a certain type of sound. So for this like analog sound, I use Diva and uh, it's just like one oscillator here. Uh, this is the um, uh, envelope here, pretty long sustain, release time. Uh, and uh, basically we have the noise here, right? So noise. And envelope two is controlling the filter cutoff. Like this. And that's pretty much it. So like it's it's a really simple sound, but I decided to make it in Diva because it was so much easier to do it in Diva because in Serum it would take you like, I don't know, uh, way more steps to achieve the same sound. So keep that in mind when you're remaking sounds, sometimes it's better to use uh, a particular synthesizer for a, a specific sound. Okay, uh, for the notes, looks like this. So again, really simple sound. And then the last sound before we jump into the drums is going to be this uh, pluck. Plug sounds. Like, again, it's a bit different, but uh, really close to the original one. Okay, and let's take a look. This is the rhythm if you want to copy it. And finally, let's talk about this sound design here. So, for this one, uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty simple. So, we have um, I saw and this is like a triangle, sort of like going into the saw, and this is how it sounds. 
So envelope one, a pretty short 156 decay time, 62 for the release time. And envelope two is pretty interesting. So as you can see, I have the attack, which is a bit longer, right? So 11 milliseconds, but I did like, like this. So I tweaked the shape. So we still have that a bit of attack, but it's becoming a bit softer. So yeah, basic MCB and this one DS1 triangle all in analog. Uh, yeah, no changes here, no like if in modulation. Uh, then a basic filter. So like this. So it still has a bit of that attack, but it's, it's uh, a bit softer. And then for the FX, a bit of distortion here like this. Doesn't change that much. Something like this. Uh, EQ to remove the uh, mids. I didn't like them. A bit of reverb and chorus. And that's uh, pretty much it for this sound. Okay, so that's it for the synth sounds. And before we finish, uh, let's quickly talk about the drums. I think the drums are like really not that interesting here, but I still, I wanna show you uh, what I did to the drums. So these are the drums. This is with the processing. That's without any processing. So basically for the drums we have, uh, I used a couple of loops here. So this is for the hats. This is hats and uh, I really like this loop. Uh, then I have my own hats which go like this. So it's uh, sort of classic 99, then one more hat here, and then also on the every kick hit, we have this uh, hat sound. We can increase, I think. And here we have the collapse, so three claps here, pretty interesting. I think we can increase the bit of decay time like this. Yeah, something like this. And then all together, pretty nice. Uh, and then uh, one more clap loop, like this. And all together, the drums sound like this. Pretty cool. So that's with the processing and uh, let's go through the processing here a bit. So we have uh, Isotope Trash 2, which is a pretty nice like saturation coloring um, plugin. So I use the preset. I don't know, like it comes with expansion, like classic textures, Isotope classic textures expansion. Like what it does, it just adds like saturation and grit to the sound. So I use like, 80%, something like this. Then I use glue compressor. This is like parallel compression. Like I squash the sound and apply just about 12%. This is really like too, too squashed. So just about like 10, maybe even like, yeah, let, let's give it a 10. Uh, then a transient shaper because we squash the drums. And now with a transient shaper, we can uh, decrease the sustain and make them punchy. Really cool. And then you can also play with the mix here. Like this. Pretty cool. And then the final thing is going to be the sidechain compression on the drums. To give it like nice punch. Yeah, and as you can see, that's pretty much it for uh, this uh, Dirty Bird uh, Take House style drop. Uh, as always, pretty simple if you look at the sound design, if you look how they arrange the track. So yeah, it was interesting to make uh, this one. That's going to be for, that's going to be it for this tutorial. So as always, thank you for watching. If you're interested in coaching, all the links are down below. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.